Hello, this is Max Drake. I want to talk about this part of the ephemeris at the moment, which is moon phases and sunset times and stuff like that. So um, uh, I'd done the ephemeris, I'd done the plot, so the next one was really when does the sun rise, when does it set each day, and what phases of the moon are we, we in through there. So something that I've been gathering anyway daily on my diary, and I thought, well, can I just automate it and put it as part of this parcel? The other thing that I've got through here is that I've got a little logo image type thing that I can actually click on. So if I click on that, it actually takes me somewhere else. So this was something that I was quite interested in being able to do. I was building a bespoke um, ephemeris for somebody who's in Wellington, and you can automate these and create them for anybody else. So it's a nice gift to actually do and suddenly say, oh, I'll e email you the daily ephemeris of wherever you live. And you can just put in the cords for that place and, and, and fire them off. And then you can actually say, um, uh, I think I need more decimal points on that one. Uh, then you can actually say, um, I want to uh, uh, go across to get some other information. So this part here is quite bespoke. It's relevant for what you are, but you may want some general reference on some other things, you know, like on, on that particular planetary fact sheet, you know, you really wanted to know that uh, Mercury was 0.33 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, you know, because uh, it comes up all the time. Uh, but uh, it's other information that you can then guide to. So I didn't want it in there, but I wanted to, to have access so that that links through to other things. So what it links through to you, uh, other people may, uh, if you're doing them for other people, um, you might think, in fact, that's actually quite a nice little gift, isn't it? I'll give you for a year uh, a, a, an ephemeris that we'll actually create for you. So there you go, nice thing to do. Um, especially if somebody's living somewhere else and you can suddenly say, well, uh, you know, you can go and look out at the moon, I can go and look out at the moon. Anyway, we start the story. I asked Mr. Bing Crosby and I said, hey, Bing, can you write me something about, um, uh, I didn't want the moon phase, I wanted the uh, sun. Tell me, uh, give me the sunrise and the sunset for the, the, the next month and uh, can you give it to me in local time as well? So it calculates it from uh, UTC, but I want to know what the time is now in New Zealand. So anyway, he said, OK, then we're going to use this thing called Astral, which is a library. And with, this is for Wellington, New Zealand, and this is the Pacific time zone. So anyway, we run that one through there. Hooray, hooray. Save what? And it comes through here. Apart from I think it's been a bit got a bit drunk because it says the sun rises at five o'clock at night and the sunset is at six in the morning. Well, if we look at this, this says 6.57 and the other one says 15.03. So five, uh, three minutes past five. So if we now just go and look on, uh, this is the NIWA site. So this is New Zealand weather and atmospherics. Um, it actually says run right is 6.49. So not 6.53. And the other one is at 5.52 and not at uh, 5.03. So the numbers are a little bit out, but something's generated and we got some information, you know. Now, first of all, you just get your information and then you can sort of start honing in on where some errors go. So maybe um, the time zone or something's a bit tweaked through there or we've got to do some adjustment. But we've got some data. That's the first step. So I said, right, okay, then that's for the sun. Give us the moon. So when it does the moon, I think this one just gets Mogador or something, or this one writes it down to a moon phase test. So this writes it to this, but it comes out with some junky bits of number. You sort of think, well, what does that mean? It goes from 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. What's that? And so you're suddenly thinking, no, there's something wrong with that. It should either be 0. Point some number 8 from between 0 and 1. So it should be 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, not 0 0.08. So I said, no, there's something funny there. Um, so in the end, I said, look, I've got this other one which will give me the, the, the moon phase for each day and it's using the ephemeris. So Mr. Bing, can you rewrite that for the moon phases? And then I found these lovely little images about these different uh, times, uh, uh, you, you know, which kind of said which is waxing and which is waning. That always gets me confused. So anyway, I run this one through and I ran it. And the first time I run it, and this one here is run and it's done two. Let's just see where it's gone. And this one goes to moon phase text. So I think it's overwritten the other one. And this one 
suddenly puts all of these cool little symbols in there and that's great well in fact the first time it didn't and it broke and I said well, hey the symbols aren't coming through and he said ah when you're actually writing to the file you want to use the encoding UTF-8 then it will actually accept um, emojis and uh, you 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 you, you that Unicode so this allows me to do that so that's marvelous so we've got it into that point of view and then I suddenly thought oh now let's go and see now now we've got the Sun and we got the moon so so wait a minute we've got the moon in there so I can do me a Sun using the EFEM one so we now run the EFEM one on the Sun and this is Sun two times text Sun two times text Sun two times text there we go and when we look at these ones this says 652 sunrise so we've actually got the sun rising in the morning instead of the evening which is nice and the sunset is 1748 so let's go and have a look again 652 so that's three minutes later than this one and the other one was 549 or 48 so therefore there's about four minutes difference in there but we're about right so I was suddenly thinking that's fine that's that's that, that's more than adequate for what I actually need so we're good to go so I was suddenly thinking well okay then the efem one seems to be giving us reasonably good data now I could check this against another couple of sites and see if there's slight variance between the sunrise and the sunset and maybe I can do some refinement but it's adequate for what my needs are so so that's fine um, so um, this has given us this. So I kind of said, well, okay then, let's combine them together and actually just have one big script file that does that. So we said, right, hi, let's go and do that. So we did this one here and we just ran it. And we said, well, instead of writing it to a text file, write it to a CSV file. So this one here runs it to Moon Sun Data 1. Moon Sun Data 1. And here it writes that information and it's got those um, things through here. This is where who happens now you see I've got these massive amounts of decimal places through here that I don't really need um, and I've got massive decimal places here and my time I've got hours minutes seconds and then I've got all of these microsecond bits that go mad and you're suddenly thinking no way too granular for what I need so we can start tidying up some of those so this one here when we start doing it that's fine and it writes it to the script file but when I actually come to try and bring that in to doing it on the table um, it won't let me put it on this table so I end up actually having to take those little emojis out of there or whatever those little icons are and actually readjust them by writing the text and I got it and it's here but I wasn't really pleased with it I say I thought no I like those little symbols but when I was trying to do it with this um, table through here um, and this is the preset up one uh, that's using some PDF. Now we're going to tell a big PDF story shortly, but um, at this point in time, it didn't work. So I went back to Bing, and the way that this one here works is that it's using um, this um, class to do it. So what I ended up doing was I took this, copied this thing through here, which is about 200 lines, although it's only about 150 because there's a, 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 all of this blurb that I stripped out of all of this. And, and I cut it down to its bare bones. So any comments and stuff like that, I just stripped them all out. So I had the bare essentials. And I said, Mr. Bing, can you make this so that it runs with UTF? And it kept on getting ambiguous, didn't like doing it, and it just kind of said, oh, it's about time that we talked about a new topic. And it just wasn't going to deal with it at all. And because I actually had the first script one, which is this s &M one through here, and it fixed this one here up so that we could use the um, uh, uh, Unicode, um, it didn't want to be able to do the other one. So I thought, well, OK, then we're going to bring out the big guns now, boy. No, no, I'm sick of you, um, the Bing Cosby. I'm going to go across and talk to uh, Chat GPT. So I went across to Chat GPT and he said, Yeah, we might, we could do this. And it started to generate stuff and they started to write out the answer and it got up to about line 90 and stopped. And I was kind of saying, Oi, where's the rest of it? And it got up to line 90 again. And he said, Oh, uh, I said, can you can you write out the rest of it? And it just starts writing from the beginning again and gets up to line 90. And then I suddenly said, Have you got a limit? And he said, no, we don't have a limit. Sometimes if there's something, I'll answer it in, a, in an extra bit. So you're kind of saying, well, fine, you've got up to your limit. Or, or sorry, 
is there a character limit? Well, actually, there is a character limit of 4,000. So I said, well, can you get, get circumnavigate that? Yeah, can you write another um, answer window to actually write the rest of the code? And he said, oh, yeah, we can do that. And he starts writing the code about other obscure things that have got nothing to do with the code above. And I said, no, no, no. Look at the code in that window. That's the bit that I want. And it just wouldn't do it. And then in the end, I find out. And I said, says, oh, well, you can use a gist and you can share the gist. So you, you, you get gist. And so I set up a gist for this bit of code. And he says, oh, no, I'm not into, it's not connected to the internet. So I can't fucking well read it. So you big dickhead. And you're suddenly saying, well, why'd you tell me to do it? And then they get sulky. He says, that time we talked about something else. Can I do anything else for you? Because I'm not fucking going to talk to you about that. So anyway, that got all maffy with me. And I actually found with the... Um, I found it very difficult. That it, it's sort of like it wouldn't tell you things. But I think that 4,000 character limit is if you've got the free account. So if you've got a paid account, it's going to be a lot more verbose about it. Now, I did go and look online. It didn't actually tell me anything. So I think as time goes on, there's going to be these AI tools, but you're going to actually have to be paying for them. So whereas I was actually getting quite a lot free with the chat GPT, now it's sort of suddenly saying, no, you've got to pay money to use my genius, which is, I suppose, reasonable in its way. But at the time being, Bing uh, chat is, is, is about Bing Crosby is still reasonably good. So I was a bit frustrated with that. So I ended up going back to Bing Crosby and I said, Bing, and Bing didn't want to do this. I said, can you write me using this library, FG, uh, FPDF2 or FPDF, can you write me a thing that I can bring in CSV data and you write a PDF table, but it will have Unicode in it? So it wrote it from scratch, and it it was it was like this thing here, um, wherever it is, the the creative table one, is about 193 lines, and uh, Bing just suddenly says, gave me this much, I think. Uh, so 97, 140, so about 70. Uh, no, about 100, about 50 lines. So uh, I suddenly thought, oh, well, what does that look like? And it was a little bit faulty to begin with at first, but you know, after a couple of little debugging, you can't say it's got this error. What do I do about that? Uh, it came through, and I thought, oh, wonderful. And also the nice thing with it, so it uses the raw thing. So it didn't use this new class that sat on top of. Uh, 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 the the uh, PDF reader or reader writer it actually just used the, the, the directly the, the writer to actually do a table and it came out marvelously so um, this was the one that the, this was the one that I ended up doing which I took out the emojis and as such and then so this is the one that I'm actually using at the moment which is the final one through here now one of the issues with this so this one's just written it and I think it's written it to a file called Moon Sun Data 2. Moon Sun Data 2. And if we look at this one here, you can see we've actually got those little emojis in there. Hooray, hooray. Now we've also got all these lines, which works really well for me because visually I find this is easier to track like that. I find this much better than uh, the ephemeris. So I think I might end up going get getting GPT to, sorry, getting Big Crosby to actually write me some uh, this again in, in the other one. So I'm very, very happy with that. So um, there's a couple of little subtleties, though, with this that I just want to draw your attention to. First of all, I ended up having to get a different... Um, uh, I had to get a different uh, text font. And the text font that is suggested that I use was using this Deja Vu TTF. So I went and got Deja Vu TTF and you've got to add it in before uh, at the beginning and you've got to self-define before you start creating the table. And the other thing they asked for, it asked for a path to that. Now, I just want to talk briefly about paths. Now, as I've said in the past, I actually just come into Python working. So I keep all of the code with different, different projects that I'm working on all underneath that Python one there. So what it means is that if suddenly I need to go and get a code from another 
folder I can actually just go into another project and I'll grab the little bit that I actually want it but I'll make it easy but what it means is I've got to give a relative path to where I'm working so that I can jump up and down through those scales so that's just my preferred way of doing it but when you've got the fonts you've actually got to give it its absolute path so if I actually got the fonts through here and if I just say copy path you see on this one here the path is actually to my Y so it's actually running from my NAS my uh, uh, network assisted storage and then it's going into Python working in astronomy blah, 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 and this is where it is but you've got to do a double backslash on all of these locations for all the directories and then it works so it took me a few times to debug that so it's just one of those things that catch you out and can kind of waste 50, 1500 hours by the time you figure it out the other thing with this is for the sun um, the sun you need your location so like the ephemeris you need to give your location in latitude and longitude so if you're doing it for somebody else in this code as well so this is the one called s and m to pdf but it's a small s and m there's a big s and m one so that's sun and moon not sadism and masochism so on this one here you need to give your observer latitude and longitude so if you give those ones through there, bang, it works there well. So you need those for your sun, but you don't need them for the moon because the moon's going to be in those phases wherever you are in the world at that particular time. You know, the only thing is you're, you're six hours, early, 12 hours earlier on the other side of the world. But apart from that, it doesn't make any difference. So just be aware of that sort of thing. So the next thing that I need to talk about is PDFs. Now, one of the things with the PDFs that I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to put a link in it so that you can click on something and it takes you to somewhere else. So you can have your bespoke data that you're just sending out all the time. But if somebody wants extra information, you can guide them as to where to go. Now, when I was searching for PDF libraries that would do all of these sorts of things, um, I came across a couple. One was Report Lab, which is quite expensive, and I came across another one, which was about $4,000 US so enterprise sort of stuff and that would do it but the, the only one that I came across was um, this one called FPDF um, and there's a 1.81 and there's an FPDF 2 so there's a version 1 and a version 2 um, and the version 2 has got a couple of extra things but um, you, you can play between either of them now in this one here you can actually get an image and inside the image you can add a link so that's what I've actually put at the bottom of uh, what I've done it's also got a, a, a concept called cell I actually haven't planned uh, it's got one called text um, but I think they just uh, prints a string I don't think you can actually put um, yeah it puts a it, you, you can't actually put uh, a, a link onto it but you can use this idea called a cell and you can put a link onto that and some of them actually show you some examples down the bottom to actually do them so uh, at this point in time we can actually do a link onto both of those so let's just go and visit those at, at this point in time so they're in a different directory ah oh, now sorry the next part of that plot here is this one here if you look on here it doesn't have this thing for open as in open an existing PDF so therefore this creates new PDFs every single time so it doesn't work with existing PDFs it only creates new ones and you can add pages and you can do things and you can do put images and lines and things and stuff and blah 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 um, onto it but it doesn't work with existing ones but in version 2 you can combine with other PDF libraries so on what I'm actually doing on mine and I've just got to come back to this example when I'm doing the ephemeris this one here this is using uh, this particular library so f uh, pdf2 to actually make this table it's actually calling in a separate class but it's actually using that library so it's creating a new pdf page from scratch so therefore I can actually add links and cells and all of these things onto this quite easily because it's a new page when I'm doing this ephemeris through here on the chart sorry on the sky map uh, what I'm doing there is that I'm actually calling in a matplotlib plot file so it's a PNG 
it's pulling that in and creating a new PDF. So it's quite easy that I can actually throw in uh, linkable text or I can throw in linkable um, uh, images and stuff. The third one again, it's a new PDF from scratch so that I can actually add the linkable thing which I have done out here just as a demonstration through that particular one um, there. So on all of these, because I'm creating a new page each time, um, this library works fantastic. But when I come to work to actually try and put a, new, a logo onto an existing one, you can do that in combination with another one. So I'm actually just going to demonstrate that. And these files are actually um, inside of, um, where are we? These files are in, in a different folder through here and uh, so, so I've just been playing with them. So this one puts the image onto one. So it, it's got a file. So I've got this file called uh, this one here. And this one here I was playing. I just generated from scratch. I just put a bit of text into there and you could locate with the text. Now, the, the other thing with this, which is really powerful, is that you can dictate where those are going. So where the image goes, you can tell it where where it wants it, where you want to place it. So this is the thing. Some of the other PDF libraries are let you put images in, but they tend to only put them in as footers um, in certain locations. So to actually get them to be put in uh, programmatically in different locations is a bit difficult. You know, I think you actually have to set them up in a PDF with them located in a certain position so that they land where you want. But that means you actually have to plan a whole lot of uh, pre-set up PDFs that you can then call up so that they land in a specific place. So there, you know, that is one process that you go to. But I actually wanted one that we could program. And the nice thing with uh, the, this one here, just looking at the uh, look at, at the um, where we're image is that you can give it an X point and a Y point and then you can say how high it is and how wide it is and then you can it's got a couple of other things like um, uh, uh, what's that the, the width and the height oh sorry image oh yeah um, and then the type which is just a if you, you, you and the type you can get put a JPEG a PNG or a GIF in there um, so that's quite good and then you can put the uh, a URL link to it or, or link to, to somewhere else so um, if we just go back to that script again, so I can take this file here, which is a pre-made one, so that's an existing file, and now we're going to slap something new onto it. So on this particular script that I come down to, we're going to run this one here, and I'm just going to go shift and run. And it comes up with a little bit of an error, which is actually so saying depreciation order dist. So it doesn't like this desk bit here, but it actually writes it out anyway. So that one there has been written to for MI, IMI max one. So that one there, if we come into here, you'll see down the bottom I've actually got my clickable. Now on this particular one, what I've actually gone through and, and done on, on here, uh, sorry, that's not the right one. Um, let me just close a couple of these down now because we've finished that conversation. So if we come to this one here, I've actually said, uh, this is the location of where the file is, so that's the image that I'm going to use. I wanted X0, so I want it on the left hand side of the sheet. Now I know that uh, 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 um, a, I know that an A4 sheet is 210 millimeters wide by 297 millimeters high. So I actually say, go and put it 270 millimeters, so right at the bottom, minus 20. Now, the actual image size is 30 by 20. So therefore, I've actually said, well, the, the height of the image is 20, so put it at the bottom of the page, less 20. So it should just sit down there, and it's 30 wide, so it's going to set out from X. So that's where it is, and it's type JPEG, and that's the link to what it is. So when we go through and look at that one there, you'll see there's very little... Uh, sorry, I'm clicking the wrong one all the time here. Um, uh, it does it maybe at the zero there's still a slight margin on the edge there but at the bottom it seems to work now if this was in landscape and I said 297 minus thing it would disappear off you wouldn't see it so you'd actually have to say it's 210 which would be the height in landscape and then minus the 20 to actually get it in so you've got to sort of play with the proportions as, as to get them as to, to how you want so that one's quite logical in its way the second one that I want to talk about here 
is the um, uh, text link. Now the text link that we actually have, I'm trying to figure this out. I can't quite see how it works in a way. Um, but I've got is it's got this concept of a cell. So if we just go back and look at a cell, the cell allows a link. There's some examples of how you can actually do some cells. None of them have got links inside here. But it actually has a float W, the width and the height, because it makes a cell. So it's a basically a rectangle of how wide and how uh, thing. The text that you want onto there, a border, so uh, how thick is the border that you want, and then the line thickness through there, and then a string of lines. So where's the text? Is the text left hand, or is the text right hand? And then is there a fill? So is there color inside of that? Now the one that I've got, um, I'm not too sure whether, and I'm sure you can move these cells around so that you can locate them in a specific point. I just haven't quite figured out um, where that is. Um, but on this one here, I ran it, my interest at this point in time was really, um, and, and I was using the examples from here combining with PDF, uh, uh, with, combining with Pi PDF 2, and I basically used these scripts and actually just got them to work with the URL link with them. And um, uh, so the second one uh, I've got through here, so this is using a, 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 another one and it's going into Mexico. So if I just run that one, I get this error again and just saying it's destination thing. Now this is using IO and instead of actually writing to a file and then taking that file and putting it on top, uh, it uses this IO and then it's putting it onto pages zero. Now this is another thing I want to talk about through here because there's a little subtlety um, that I just want to, to do. Um, so on this one here, let's just get it. So Max2 comes through here. And if we look at that, here's that link to file. And if I click on that, that then takes me through. So I've now got a clickable text that I can actually put inside a file. Now, um, I just want to see that I could work them or they can actually be worked at the end of the day. Maybe this isn't the final solution. Maybe the final solution is actually just to get a Word document and save it as a, P uh, as, as a PDF to get a whole load of uh, links that I, I want. But I wanted something programmatically, so I wanted to see if I could do it programmatically. I don't seem to be able to control where this is totally located. Um, and that's what sort of I wanted to be able to do. Because I can move the image and locate the image wherever I want. I just don't, I'm not too sure if I can do that with the cell. But I think I can, I just haven't researched it too much. But this is the second thing that I want to do. Now this is taking a new image and it's applying it to an existing PDF. Now, one of the things which I found when I was um, generating this PDF, I suddenly thought, oh, okay then, I'll, I'll just use that example that I've just been showing you there. And I'll go and stick it onto page one, which is actually page two, because the first page in Python is zero and the next one's one. And he said, no, 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 out of range. And you're saying, what the hell out of range? And what it happens to do, so I've used FPDF to make the tables, to put all the icons in, to put all of this text, to do everything, to bring the, the image in. What I'm actually using later on on this script through here is that I'm using, oh sorry, no, it's not on this one, it's the other one. So in the EFEM, uh, sorry, whichever one it is, um, no, it's the one that actually does the um, plot on that one there. I'm actually merging the three PDFs together. And the way that I'm merging is that I'm using this Pi PDF 2. Now, when it merges them, it still seems to ding, and I haven't really given it a good interrogation yet, um, in that it doesn't seem to give it a page number. So it's just kind of merged them all together, but they don't seem to have any identity. So that's where it's suddenly saying, well, this isn't page one, this isn't page two. So I haven't actually given that identity, and I'm not too sure how to do that. But what I did note was when you actually said, when this one said, oh, go and stick it onto page one, it just didn't do it. It would let it do to page zero because they knew there was a file there and it would put it on the first page. But that's as far as it went. So I don't really need to do that from the point of view of the way that I'm actually constructing this because um, the way that my process is going at this point in time, 
um, I create um, the ephemeris, then I use that data, um, it, uh, I take that data and it's in the CSV at one point in time. Then I, the second one is I, I created this and in this file here, the script that runs this one, it makes this and then it joins, the, it merges these two um, uh, P, PDFs together. Now, because I've actually created another one, because I haven't structured it necessarily, sorry, so it, it would do the first one, that's created and create a PDF file. That one's done the second one, it creates a PDF file and then it merges those two together. And then there's another script that then says, um, go and email that um, to, to me. Um, but now I ended up with this third one. So now I've got to generate this first one here, the ephemeris. Then I've got to generate this second one then I've got to generate the third one, one, one through here, and then I merge all three, because this is where I'm doing the merge in this particular script for this one here. And then I've got the fourth script, which actually just does the email. So it might mean I've got to restructure or rewrite or take out the bit which is doing the merging in this particular one and add that to the uh, email trigger. So I'm still triggering, uh, now I'm triggering four scripts, whereas before I was triggering three. So I've just had to reorder because just the way that it's actually been written. So, uh, but at this point in time, I can't suddenly say, uh, create, cre create that image, create that one there, create that one there. Now I'm going to add a logo onto all of these three here. Now you see, um, in the, that I can actually say on page zero, that I actually want the image 210 at, at x equals 0, 210 down minus 20. On this second one, I actually want it 210 down minus 20. On the third one, I want it uh, 0, 279, 297 down minus 20. And to actually get the logos in the bottom left hand corner if I wanted them in all of those. So I could have actually done it in, in the automation in a different way, but. Um, the, the fact that I, I did them in this particular process like that is that I can actually individually put ones on each individual script. But if I just wanted a, a, a specific script to work at the very end that would suddenly saying, right, I'll create ephemeris, I'll create my plot, I'll create um, the sun and moon one. And then after long, I'll actually come along and actually just put on all of my logos at the end or put on all of my extra links or, you know, if you want to kind of give me lots of money, come onto my Patreon site and at least throw a million at me every single time. Um, yeah, so there's a sort of like process that you're doing. So really, in some ways, each of these has been an extra exploration into to, to different um, phases of the stuff. And at this point in time, I haven't got that identity of which page numbers or the pagination aspect of it such that it can go in and find out which page it is so that I can then locate my um, uh, uh, icon where I want or, or, or my uh, linkable image. So um, I, I'm pleased with what it was. It ended up being a, the whole using different libraries that one library would create PDFs, but it wouldn't work with existing PDFs. That was a little bit of a complication coming through there, but you can actually use two different libraries to actually work together and they're free, you know, and that's the thing. The other ones were very expensive um, for doing the tabular data and things like that. You're suddenly thinking, well, if there's a free version, why do you actually want to pay all that money to do it? And if you're not doing them that frequently, really a free one's more than adequate. So um, overall, there's a few little subtleties in there. And and uh, I actually, again, this was another thing that completely surprised me. The actual coding itself and getting the data, which is seriously cool data, that didn't take long at all. <laughs> it was all the other little fiddly things that, that they've done. But to a certain extent, they, they'll give you a more polished finish at the end. And I think that's what's quite important. You know, you can just end up with the data and it can just look a little bit ratty. But can we actually get a process and refine it so that it's, it's, it's quite sophisticated? And, and the other thing that I think is, is quite beautiful about this is that it's totally bespoke for wherever you are. Um, so as I said, so I think possibly I, I think I've covered all of the different parts of it and the little questions in my mind. Oh, how would I do that? How would I actually have a Unicode into here as putting symbols in? Because it might be better to actually start putting uh, symbols in all of these. So if I actually had the sun symbol and the moon symbol and all of those, I've actually got onto those. Then visually, I don't actually need to uh, 
have lines and stuff like that because I can visually see which ones will I still going to get the data across the side but um, uh, with some tweaking through here so the next thing that I there's two things I, I, I want to do I want to do some constellations which is basically a repetition of this one here and possibly a repetition of that one so there's no learning in that the next one might be tides and in fact tides are quite useful for me and they're a little bit strange where I, I live in Wellington because there's a kind of lots of uh, edges and there's a harbour and stuff so the tides occur at different times in different places um, so um, that might be an interesting exercise to do and then so therefore the scripting uh, the Python scripting might be a little bit more complex uh, than the actual tabular stuff and things like that I, I found I spend an awful lot more energy in a way on uh, the ancillary things like the the PDFs and getting the links and doing and understanding all of those sorts of processes but they're things that I want to be able to do programmatically so that you could sort of add things by an extra line of code you know as I said as a fallback you can actually just put all a, a, put a whole lot of links into something like a, a word document save it as a PDF and just put it as an addenda to the bottom of this you know that is the easy way as long as you're not changing it that frequently you just attach that last one all the time but it suddenly becomes an issue of not an extra line of code. You've got to go back, rewrite the next bit, resave it as a PDF, re put it into the right position so that it does it. So it's a lot more manual in a way than if you were to just tweak a bit of code. So programmatically, I feel as if I'm still in control of a lot of the automations that are actually happening here, and the whole thing is automated from the point of view. A nice thing might be to actually just take out completely and have a separate file with actually your latitude and longitude in the name or whatever so whereas at the beginning I'd actually got at the very top of the file uh, which area I was in a name and a location or something like that um, and now I've got it in two locations you could actually just put it into a third file or another file and they would all just call that file to find out if they needed latitude and longitude all of those things through there so that would be a, a, an elegant solution for the code so refine it and adapt it as it comes through so um, this is just really the steps of me nutting through these sorts of things I think trying to get some of these symbols and maybe then bringing them down onto here now so I don't think I'd do them on that one I'd actually think I'd use this table set up and maybe have the symbols through there which would be quite a useful thing to have um, so um, it's a progression and each one sort of an improvement on the last or I'm learning other things along the way um, so I think if I do the tides that might be another video if I do the constellations uh, if I do that I'd most probably just demo it very quickly and just give a link because it's 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 basically what I've got through here I don't think there's much difference you know and again if I do that I might just do a little bit of refinement but then that's just a, a little bit of tweaking with the code so uh, I've also put some of the earlier code in there which actually points to the other library uh, that, that I was initially using and um, this one and I'm really only in the astral library and I'm using the ephemera uh, ephem library through here um, I think I just wanted a certain amount of continuity with ephem at the end of the way rather than going in and using another library because it's just another one that you've got to maintain to see that it's updated all, all the time so um, I'm starting to use um, you know the date time the ephem the pi tz um, these libraries um, and it, it's starting to get a lot more consistency with all the things so that it's easy to fire up and and, and uh, do things with so I hope that's been of interest to you if you found it interesting so I think all three videos all sort of fit together and they all if like if, if I was to see these videos myself I suddenly think oh well I've got all of those I've got all the code now how would I restructure that to make it a lot more efficient for myself and then you can suddenly say well I can give somebody a birthday present and suddenly saying well this here's where you live here's an ephemeris for all of the things and I just send you an email every day and you'll actually have that information and you know it's a uh, you could tart it up and, and do prettier pages or something like that or add little uh, embellishments and things and I think that's one of the things with this code it's really just doing the steps all the way through and showing the processes it hasn't been refined so that you can then uh, refine and stylize to your particular preferences but you actually have the the bare bones of all the bits now for for what you need to do so um, 
thank you very much for watching uh, if, if you found it useful give a thumbs up the code is available through there the links to the um, libraries are also there and um, uh, I'd really like to see if you end up using it and doing things yourself uh, I'd really like to see if you could actually put a comment in there and, and show me a link uh, get, get immense pleasure out of seeing how other people would use it so thank you very much for watching